Hail and Mashes. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spark King. And in today's video, I will show you super cool build for Halcyon. Halcyon is definitely a Moon Druid, and if you want him in your party as Moon Druid, this build will be for you. So, when creating Moon Druid, you basically don't need anything else. You can go completely Moon Druid style with 12 levels in Moon Druid, and that's it. And that's what we're doing today pure Moon Druid Halcyon. So, level 1, we're picking Shillelay and Thornwhip Cantrips. As for spells, you don't need to pick anything, Druid will know every spell that he will unlock, so I will explain all spells that we need when we finish building our levels. When you change your form into bear or other animals, you will lose your strength, dexterity and constitution stats, so they are not very important ones. Most important stat is wisdom, it's your spell casting modifier. You won't have really high armor class anyway. So focusing on increasing your armor class with dexterity is not important, and my ability point recommendation will be as followed. 11 dexterity, 16 constitution, 10 intelligence, 17 wisdom, and 12 in charisma. On level 2 we're picking our subclass, it will be Circle of the Moon of course, we unlock a lot of animal forms, and can prepare one more spell. On 3rd level you will get more spells of level 2, level 4 will, will give you additional cantrips, you can pick any cantrip you like, if you don't have cleric pick guidance, and we get an additional feat. My feat of choice right now would be ability improvement and I won't have higher wisdom and higher dexterity. And level 5 we get a wild strike, now we can do additional attack while in wild shape, very powerful stuff, and a lot of druid spells from level 3. Level 5 is the level where you can actually recruit Halsin to your group and start playing him. And one of the reasons why you want Halsin as your Moon Druid because he got unique form, unique wild shape. But before going into wild shape, what actually can you need? Two of your cantrips, Turn Whip and Shillelay. Level 1 spells, Create or Destroy Water, Fairy, Fire and Long Strider. Level 2 spells, Moonbeam and Hold Person and spike grows. You don't exactly need spells from level 3, so you can pick any spell you like. Maybe you like Goodberry for more camp supplies and like free healing potions, maybe you like to entangle people, or you just uh, need some restoration from poison. Also Flaming Sphere is a nice spell to have, it will be additional body in, in a fight. But actually that's all we need. So before going into wild shape, Always cast Long Strider on you and your allies. You can upcast it, it will be a ritual, so it uses no spell slots and will give you additional movement speed in a battle. So for your cantrips, Shillelay will give you more damage with your staff or club, whatever you're using. So use it as bonus action in case you don't want to go into wild shape. And Turn Whip will push targets closer to you. You can throw targets off the cliff as you can see here, so they will drop into chasm, but most of the time you will use turn whip after you already cast it moonbeam or spike grows. Also at level 5 you will get this call lightning spell from druid and it's a really powerful spell. It's concentration spell, but for example if you use using spike grows you create a hard moved terrain. It will damage enemies when they walk on this terrain, it will damage allies and to yourself, so be careful with this spell. Still very nice and powerful zoning too. And when enemies try to walk away from this damaging spikes, uh, just use turn whip and push them to the spikes again, but be aware not to stand on the spike by yourself, it's really hard to do. One of the good combinations you can do at this level, to use create or destroy water on first turn. Don't forget, you can cast it as level 1 spell slot, it will create a lot of water and make everyone wet, but also you can cast it as action. It uses no spell slot at all, it will be a lesser radius, but that's more than enough most of the time. So you just make enemies wet on your first turn and then on the second turn you call lightning on them. This will make large amount of damage and basically double damage you inflict. Then every other turn you can use activate call lightning again. So that's super powerful level 3 spells that you can cast every turn with your action, that's why it's so powerful. If you need to, to maybe disable enemies, you can use Hold Person on them. Or if you need higher hit chance for you and your party, use Fairy Fire. Also, it will reveal 
invisible creatures. So just cast Fairy Fire over here, you will concentrate on this spell, and basically all of the spells, almost all of the spells is concentration spells, so you can cast only one at a time, because if you cast Fairy Fire, and then on the next turn we're doing Cold Lightning, Fairy Fire will fall off. And just in case your allies in danger, use Healing Ward and heal your allies. Most of the time, don't use it in a battle. When someone low on health, wait until they actually fall. And instead of coming and using your action to pick them up, you can use bonus action with Healing Ward. That's basics of Druid gameplay at level 5, but also we have Wild Shapes. So, Moon Druid comes with a lot of Wild Shapes and I got a really big Moon Druid guide, you can watch it later in the description, in the pinned comment. But best uh, shapes for this spider shape. Wolf is really strong, Deep Roti is really strong too. And Bear, you can never make mistake by changing yourself into Bear. But as Halsin, never use this shape. Because Halsin gets super unique wild shape Cave Bear. It's far more stronger than normal bear form. Becoming Bear or other animals is available with wild shape charges. You use it one charge to make yourself animal and then it will recharge on short rest. So don't worry, you can be animal in each fight. Another cool combination that I should mention here is to use your bonus action to make yourself dire raven. While it's not really powerful form, still you can be a raven just to use fly action. It's really powerful action at this point of the game at level 5 and you can pick best position on the battlefield easily. When you travel to this position, use dismiss wild shape without using any action or bonus action. This way you will be in the best position on the battlefield and now you can cast your concentration spells from this position. It's hard to get to you, it's easy for you to aim your spells, heal your allies, disable enemies and stuff like that. But most of the time you will do some concentration spell like Moonbeam for example or Spike Grows, maybe Fairy Fire and become Cave Bear. It requires bonus action as any other wild form and you becoming this really scary bear. So cool part as you can see you keeping your concentration. So making enemy into hold person mode first and then switching into bear will give you ability to do two attacks on next turn. As wild bear you doing multi attack once per battle. It's really powerful to d6 plus your strength modifier plus 1d8 plus your strength modifier and your strength is fixed to 20 when you're in this form. And when enemies in hold person mode, you will do this as critical hit. So you will roll all dices two times. Look at the damage. This is level 12 character. We are level 5 right now. And damage is just insane. Also, I didn't know if it's mentioned anywhere, but we can do extra attack as close. Don't forget, we got this extra attack as level 5 bear. And this damage, for some reason, is not lower. And we just destroyed level 12 character in one turn. So, stuff that is not mentioned for some reason, or maybe it's bugged right now when I'm recording, close should do to the 6 plus 5 damage. But, for some reason, we're rolling additional 1d4 slashing damage when using this attack. Maybe Larian forgot to change description and they added this power to Halsin. But that's basically the reason why you won't always be in this form, in this super powerful bear form. So let's finish leveling. On level 6 you will ignore resistance and immunity to non-magical damage. Very powerful stuff. In beast form, of course. Level 7 will give you more spells from level 4, from druid spell list. Level 8, additional wild form, saber tooth tiger. And we can pick feet. So right now, depending on your party composition and how often you use your wild shapes, you won't want one of the two feats. If you're using mostly Halsin as spellcaster, then definitely go with ability improvement, wisdom. But in case you're using him mostly as animal, then go for tavern brawler. This feat will add strength modifier to attack rolls and increase chances to hit when you're in bear or other animal forms. Then basically we're finishing leveling. Getting to level 10, additional cantrip, we don't care about cantrips right now. Coolest part, at level 10 we're getting Myrmidon forums, at level 11 we're getting level 6 spells. And finally at level 12, additional feet. So right now we're picking feet that we haven't chosen yet. It will be a plus 2 into wisdom or tavern brawler. So, how this druid will look at the last levels. And what gear to get. 
First of all, let's talk about spells. So, most of the time you want to pick Conjure Minor Elemental, Conjure Woodland Being, and Conjure Elemental. This is three spells that uh, will give you additional summons, they are really powerful. Additional bodies in the fight is always nice to have. As a good level spell. As a good level for spells will be Ice Storm and Wall of Fire. Wall of Fire is a concentration spell to create basically Wall of Fire that will damage enemies and zone some areas. Ice Storm just a damaging spell. From level 5 you can pick again Conjure Elemental and Insect Plague. That's kind of the same spell as Spike Growth, but Spike Growth lasts for 100 turns, this will last only for 10 turns, still it's doing more damage but I'm not a fan of this spell actually. So from level 6 there's a lot of cool spells actually, 3 of them, and I would say you need to pick spells that you like. So Wall of Thorns, 60 turns, you create a wall that will inflict a large amount of the damage. So just use this wall, Wild Shape into Bear or other forms, I will explain it in a second, and destroy your opponents. Another way to concentrate on Sunbeam. You just blind creatures in front of you, but cool part about some beam, you can recast it every turn. So that's level 6 spell, doing nice damage, blinding targets, and you can cast it 10 times each turn. But if you're lacking support, you can use level 6 to make your party more beefier, increase the HP, and you will get some camp supplies. So it's just your choice. Other than that, we keep in same spells, and just in case we cannot cast most of them. Call Lightning, 3d10 damage from level 3, and for some reason I can't upcast it right now, maybe because it's a it spell or whatever it is, but you should be able to upcast it. Probably game is bugged right now a little bit. Still, just basic Moonbeam, level 2 doing 2d10 damage, you can upcast it to level 6 and do 6d10 damage, and basically our combos will be the same. So let's talk about gear. Actually, you can get any gear you like, because in Wild Shape your gear doesn't matter. So until late game, it doesn't matter what you wear, as long as you are proficient with this stuff. That's why even in the late game I'm keeping this Vapira's Crown, you can get it early in the Act 1. When you heal a creature, you will heal yourself, so that's just pretty nice. Kinda little buff, in case you will use Healing Ward. So you will heal your ally and yourself a little bit, very nice. For our cloak, it doesn't matter again, just pick any mental you like. I like Crusader's Mental, because it gives you a concentration spell. So in case you don't want to concentrate on one of your good spells or you out of spell slots, you can concentrate on Crusader's Mental. Your ally's weapon attacks will deal all additional 1d4 damage, so pretty nice stuff. For our armor, it will be Armor of Moon Basking. You will gain additional temporary hit points after casting Wild Shapes, so you will be a lot tankier in Wild Shapes, and you will reduce incoming damage by one, so pretty nice stuff. And you will have bonus to armor class. That's big stuff, because it's hard to increase your armor class when you are wild shaped. Then boot slot, I like Night Walkers in case your party don't need it, so you can use Misty Step without any spell slot and reposition yourself with this bonus section without consuming Wild Shape Charge as a Raven. As for gloves, I will stick with Quick Spell Gloves. It will give you ability to cast Cantrip as bonus action instead of action. Most of the time you don't need any gloves, but this will give you this nice combination. So, basically you can create, for example, Wall of Thorns with your action, and maybe you're in position where some enemy can't be targeted by it. So, you cast it. And then by using a quick spell of Flinger, you can cast Turn Whip as bonus action instead, and in one turn, took enemy to this wall of turns to inflict large amount of damage. So that's a nice combination to keep in mind. You want to have some kind of shield in your hand. Sentinel shield is nice because it's giving you additional initiative roll advantage. Combine it with Hellrider Longbow, and your initiative will be really high. So you will probably act first in the battle, that's nice because you can sculpt battlefield up to your preferences with wall of thorns moonbeams spike growth and other stuff as for weapon slot it just doesn't matter pick any weapon you like if you play in party without spell casters or they don't need marker heshkir for some reason you can equip marker heshkir on this druid to cast kereshka favor on yourself 
and unlock some level 6 spells for free basically. At last levels you will get a lot more wild shape forms, so you can be no longer just basic animals, you can be in owl bear form, panther form, or even dilophosaurus. That's all powerful forms and in the late game you can prioritize them. If you want more damage go with dinosaur form, be more tanky and really nice damage too, all bear. Or if you want to be stealthy go in panther form. My favorite is all bear of course, it's really cool looking, scary and you can use a lot of cool actions. For example you can not only just do normal jump but also crushing flight. That's bonus actions that will prone your enemies. And you can jump above your wall of thorns, for example. Still make sure not to break your concentration. And one more reason to be all bear, your attacks can push targets away. So again, that's a nice idea to do. If you want to push enemies on wall of thorns, or maybe on spike growth or other concentration spells. And that's why we picked Tavern Brawler. It adds not only to your attack rolls, but also to your damage rolls when you are in any animal form. So that's really powerful feat for moon druids. And yeah, don't worry, cave bear is still very powerful too. While it's written as 36 hit points, that's not true, because all forms scale with your druid level. And maximum level cave bear will be this guy with 117 hit points. With Tavern Brawler, multi attacks will do a lot more damage now, and you can destroy enemies in one hit, especially if you cast Hold Person on them before. So let's help her survive. And look at this damage when enemy is Hold Person. So we're holding this lady, and right now we'll inflict multi attack. Oh my goodness. 50 damage with one attack, and we can do two more attacks. While I'll think, of course. Old bear is more powerful, still, for role-playing purposes, you can still use this cave bear and it's really powerful. This mon druid will be a nice addition to your party. But in case you want to learn more about his wild shape forms and summons, go into full moon druid guide and you will understand how to use every one of those. See you in the next videos, guys.